the whole thing's very surreal, mm. right? It does, it's hard to explain. So there was no pain. Was it not? And I remember when all the dust settled because the terrain we're working in is very sandy and dusty. So initially there's this huge dust cloud and I can't see anything. But when it settled and I realized what had happened, I looked down to where my legs should have been and, and they were gone and that there was blood and clarent and fluid pouring out, but there was no pain. And it's almost like, it felt like a dream and I'm looking at it and my, my brain just couldn't process it. It's like this, surely if this is real, then, then I'll be in immense pain, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. You didn't have any pain? It was just like, a, if you imagine pins and needles, right? And yeah. times it by 10,000. Right. It was just, vroom, 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 yeah. vroom, this really intense throbbing. And it, it was more annoying than it was painful. Um, and then I noticed my arm after that. Uh, I kind of took my attention away from my legs to, I, I remember thinking about my team and just kind of snapping out of it instantly and trying to see where they were. And I saw my arm, which was still attached to my body, but completely the, the bicep and the forearm shredded, all the bones inside were shattered. Um, and again, just a real intense kind of throbbing pins and needles feeling. Um, and, and I remember thinking there's there's no way it's, it's strange, right? I remember thinking, there's no way I'll survive this because I'm in the worst possible situation you could be in. Was that your first thought? Like when you come around and realize what happened, was it like, oh, I'm going to die? No. Was it not? My, my first thought yeah. was I was angry and I was embarrassed. Embarrassed? And I was guilty. I was angry because the way we're trained in, in the Royal Marines is that we should be able to go toe to toe with anybody, right? Whether it's in a firefight, a knife fight, a fist fight, that's what we're trained to do. And in my mind, and we had these conversations before me and the lads and said, you've got to be pretty stupid to stand on a landmine <laughs> because the terrain that you work in, it's not like a sandy beach where you can dig a hole, bury something, and then you, there's no ground sign. It's hard, compact, like clay type of sand. So when you're digging in it, you just leave ground sign everywhere and you can see. So I'm just like, you got to be dumb if you're going to stand on a landmine. But I think where it had rained and we we're in this bowl, it had smoothed it all out so you couldn't see anything. So I, I remember immediately thinking, you're the dickhead that we were that's talking about the other day. That is, fucking, <laughs> that is fucking mental though. That. That's one I of know. your first thoughts yeah. after yeah. after something like that happening. Is, yeah. I'm a fucking dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Do you no, know what I mean? Exactly like, what I that's fucking mad. And then I felt embarrassed because of the conversation we had about how stupid you've got to be to set off an ID. And then the guilt set in because I thought what I said earlier about how sometimes when they plant these things, the, the idea is that you maim somebody, they come help and then they come over the, the brow of the hill with the AKs. Yeah. And and I just lying there thinking, waiting to hear AK-47 fire and thinking I've got everybody killed. But fortunately that wasn't what happened. You know, and I'm a father of three, but I only had um, one kid when this happened. My daughter Kezia, she was two years old. Yeah. And, and, it sounds like there's a, you know, like I'm lying there for 10 minutes, enjoying myself, going through this thought process is a lot you think about in yeah, very, very imagine. quick succession. Mm. And I immediately then thought about her and thought if I survived this, I mean, she's from a previous relationship as well. So I didn't have a very consistent relationship with her because I didn't get on with her mum. And I thought if I survive this and go back home, I'm going to have no relationship with her because how can I pick my daughter from school in a wheelchair with no legs and one arm? Because that's bound to lead to bullying, right? And then she's probably going to hate me and not want me around because I'm causing grief in her life and all these crazy, weird thoughts go on. And then I remember thinking, do you know what? If I die now, and it's bizarre because given the situation, it was a very real possibility, but in the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't going to happen because I knew the lads would do whatever it took to get me out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I remember thinking that if I die now, I'm good to go because to me, this is honorable and I would die doing something noble. And even though my daughter won't remember me, she can hopefully grow up proud knowing that I did die doing something honorable. So I, I took my helmet off and I threw my helmet and I closed my eyes. And because I'm in this huge crater now, there's a like an incline behind me. So I slumped the back against this incline, closed my eyes and just pretended I was on a beach, just chilling. And it was bizarrely relaxing. I was about to say, was it peaceful at that yeah. point? You just thought. Yeah, it, it felt 
really calm and, and relaxed. And I just, and I, I, I thought all that's going to happen now. And you, you start to feel exhausted, like more tired than you've ever felt in your life, right? It's just drained. Like you can feel the life draining out your body. And I thought, okay, all that will happen now is I'll fall asleep, but this time I won't wake up. And that's what it's like. It's like if you're tired at the end of a long week and you go, and you know, those times when you, your head hits the pillow and you're out, it was like that. It's me every night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I remember thinking, you know, this time I just won't wake, I just won't wake up. And I was good to go. I was yeah. happy with that. And then, you know, obviously the lads do what the lads do best and they kicked in and they were incredible and, and they did everything that they should have done perfectly and they got me out of there and a medic came and gave me pain relief and put tourniquets on and cut me out the minefield